The promise of Sonos' Wi-Fi speakers is a truly connected home audio system. Integrated with devices like iPhones and iPads, as well as online streaming services like Apple Music, Pandora, and Spotify. To see how well this works, we outfitted an apartment with Sonos' three main speakers, as well as some of its home theater equipment, the Play Bar, and Sub. We started with the Play Bar, and using the Sonos Controller app, we were prompted to connect the speaker to Wi-Fi, as well as create a Sonos account. There are ways of making a Sonos setup totally wired, but that largely defeats the purpose. An optional but recommended part of the setup is something called TruePlay. This lets owners tune the speakers to a room by walking around with their iPhone, capturing loud pulsing sounds bouncing off the walls. In our testing, the final results seemed worth it. Perhaps the most attractive Sonos feature for some people is the ability to control all of your music from a single app. This includes on-device media, libraries from both Mac and PCs, and of course, the streaming services we mentioned earlier. There are even service-specific interfaces, for instance, voting a track up or down on Pandora. Unfortunately, Siri commands can't be used with Apple Music or any other service. We really enjoyed the flexibility of the Sonos platform, which made it easy to group and degroup speakers or adjust their volume separately or in unison. It was also easy to push different audio sources to different rooms, which would even resume where we left off in some circumstances. There isn't a huge quality difference between Play 1, Play 3, and Play 5. Which ones to go with are really a matter of space, purpose, and budget. For many, a $199 Play 1 might be all they need, offering solid fidelity and bass. It's also fairly compact and humidity resistant, meaning it can be used in the bathroom. Those with a lot of cash can pair a couple of Play 1s with the Play Bar and Sub to build a 5.1 channel home theater setup. By design, the sweet spot seems to be the Play 3, coming in at $299 which not only upgrades to stereo, but may actually be better in tight spaces due to its squat shape. The speaker could be tilted on its side or mounted on a wall or stand. The Play 5 is effectively a deluxe oversized version of the 3. This speaker was able to fill a large room with both high quality sound and heavy bass. Most people don't need anything so powerful, but it's a good choice for a centerpiece stereo system, particularly since it's the only Sono speaker we tested with an auxiliary input. We've already reviewed the Play Bar on its own, but to recap, it's a solid 9-speaker soundbar meant for TVs, while still supporting the same streaming options as other Sonos devices. It is expensive at $699, but that may be offset by it handling all of your living room needs. To us, the sub felt somewhat redundant. It does indeed offer a deeper bass, but the Play 1, 3, and 5 speakers typically offer enough bass on their own for a small to medium-sized room. It makes the most sense when paired with a Play Bar, but it's hard to justify the $699 price tag, since the Play Bar's base is already fairly decent. So should you go with Sonos? For a single speaker setup, a decent Bluetooth alternative might be just fine, like some that support Google Cast or Apple AirPlay. It's worth noting that you need an Apple TV or AirPort Express to use AirPlay with Sonos. For a house-wide audio system, there really aren't any other options that accomplish so much so easily especially with Sonos' simple setup and grouping, along with a convenient controller app. People building a multi-room system from scratch should definitely consider going the Sonos route. To see the full Sonos article, check out the link in the video description, and for more news, reviews, and how-tos, check out appleinsider.com and subscribe to Apple Insider on YouTube.